All right, Shalom Hebrews. This is Israel being Israel for the Israelite Brotherhood. And uh, when I made a video, man, I've been trying to get this video out man, for about two or three days. And uh, my rise to the Israelite Brotherhood. And uh, man, the, uh, man, the first version, man, I made, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, man, some people, man, might be sensitive to certain information and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I had to revise it. And, uh, but this is what I'm doing. You know, as the founder of the Israelite Brotherhood, I don't need nobody telling my story. You know, man, you know, man, we leave, people leave this earth all the time. And we don't know when Almighty Yah will call you off this earth. It could be 10, 15 years from now. Man, it could be the next day, the next hour. We don't know. But what I don't need as the founder of the Israelite Brotherhood is somebody else telling my story. And I don't need nobody to tell my story. And how I can tell you my story. And then you being a member of the Israelite Brotherhood, you want to know about the founder. You know what I'm saying? The person that chart the direction of the organization. You want to know about his history and who he is and where he come from. Well, I'm putting all minds out on the table. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got nothing to hide. And, uh, you know, Almighty, y'all saves. And knowing my past and where I come from is a testimony that Almighty, y'all saves. And we, as Israelites, mean we got to call on Almighty, y'all, men to save us in this day and time because our people, man, men is caught up in this Amorite system and they don't know right from wrong. You know, we the same Israelites in the Tanakh that broke the covenant that ran into Africa in the book of Jeremiah. You know, we the same Hebrews. Alright, Hebrews, you know, man, it's Israelite Brotherhood. I'm I'm the founder. I'm the founder of the Israelite Brotherhood. And I don't need everybody to tell my story. You know what I'm saying about where I come from. And my upbringing, you know, I don't want nobody to sugarcoat it. So I'm going to tell you, just like it is, uncut. You know, uncut. You know, some people might feel offended about this, but you know I'm telling the truth. I ain't, I ain't got to lie, man, about my past. And I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal because it is what it is. But, you know, as far as the members of the Israelite Brotherhood, man, you need to know where I come from. And then also, this is a testimony for the brothers and sisters, man, that's in that gang life, man, especially in California, you know, I come from the same environment you come from, and uh, we got that warrior spirit, you know, and we are the fighters for almighty Yah, it's just that we've been misdirected, you know, we've been misdirected, you know, in this Amorite system, and you know, we're still in captivity, and how people don't know right from wrong, well, your spirit been telling you that you was a fighter, and, and you know, you've been a fighter, but you've been fighting for the wrong cause. You know, we need to start fighting for our Israelite heritage, and, and man, the Israelite brotherhood definitely needs your support. It's brothers and sisters, men that's in them gangs is the ones that I want to be part of the Israelite brotherhood. Men, the brothers and sisters that's ex-gang members that when they wake up, men, men to their heritage, they already fighters. Me and they'll do good. Me and they'll do good in the uh as being a member of the religion killers. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, the religion killer it is up under the Israelite Brotherhood umbrella. It's same as the Vanguard. But but the religion killer off a special Hebrews that got hard, man, that's got hard and, and ain't with you know what I'm saying. It, Willing to make the sacrifice, man, ain't scared to make the sacrifice. You know, that's what the religion killers is about. You know what I'm saying? And it's brothers and sisters that live their gang life, man, that, yeah, y'all fit the criteria. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is learn the history. You know, and I got plenty of history documented showing that we are the Israelites. You know, I show you that we are the Israelites without a question of it out. You know, I show you that we are the Israelites, and I walk you through Tanakh history, man. Like, like a hot butter, uh, like a hot knife cutting through butter. All right, Hebrews, you know, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. And like I said, I don't need nobody to tell my story. And I ain't ashamed of where I come from. 
You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. Shalom. Much love to the Israelite community. And it's like this. Man, my mama always said this. Either you're going to love me or you're going to hate me, man. It's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? But I'm with this Israelite brotherhood, and I pray that y'all join me too. Shalom. Shalom, Hebrews. This is a message from the Israelite brotherhood. I'm documenting my my past and my rise to the Israelite brotherhood. You know, it's been a long journey, but, you know, almighty Yah got me here, you know, and, uh, man, I'm thankful for almighty Yah for waking me up and not letting me be among the mentally dead that's dominated by the Amorite culture. And then what I want to do, man, I want to document my history and, you know, my involvement in gang activity, you know, Hebrew on Hebrew genocide, and then how I woke up and, you know, to the uh, stage that I'm in, you know what I'm saying, that I'm at now. And, you know, I'm the founder of the Israelite Brotherhood, and I don't need nobody to come telling my past. You know what I'm saying? Ain't none of us here on this earth forever. But I'm documenting my past. You know, this is my pleasure documenting my past. And, 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 and you know, you getting it straight from the source. And, and I don't have nothing to hide. You know, it is what it is. But I'm finna show you, Israelites, you know, how I come to, you know, being involved with the Israelite Brotherhood. You know, man, I got a, a grandfather, you know, my parents and roots, man, originally from Tennessee, you know, Tennessee, you know, in a, man, that's in Eastern Tennessee. And then, you know, my granddaddy, man, my grandmother was married and my granddaddy had uh, uh, six children, three, four girls, two boys, but then he had another boy, you know what I'm saying, outside the uh, marriage. And then my granddaddy, man, it'd be so hard in the, in the South, man, in the uh, 50s and 60s, you know what I'm saying? It was so hard, man. And then, you know, my grandmama, man, she was a strong person. And if you, you know, was weak in any kind of way, she going to make you fold up. And then, you know, my granddaddy folded up, man, and left his family, man, and went to uh, California, Los Angeles. Now, he had a brother out there. Man, I think that was out there from the military or something like that. But my granddaddy took off, man, to go be, you know, with his brother. And, uh, man, he stayed out there. Man, I think, you know, in uh, uh, in the middle of the 60s, you know, man, he stayed. And then he eventually got him a house. You know, he bought him a house. You know, he was a hard worker, but, you know what I'm saying, and, but he left his family, but he bought a house in California. Plus, he had a restaurant, a business in in Chattanooga, you know, that he left, you know. And it didn't work out, but he went to California to be with his brother, and he eventually got a house. And then, you know, this is me in the house right here on Dinker and 73rd. And that look good, man. I still got relatives in it. And then, you know, man around about... You know, I was born around about 70. My mama left Chattanooga. Now my mother and her sister and her brother Dan, Dan, you know, my Auntie Sherry and my Uncle Dan, you know, they were substance abusers. You know what I'm saying? And my mother had, uh, I mean, it was me and my, uh, me and the sister up under me, me and my oldest sister, and, you know, got took by her father's uh, uh people you know his mother and, and and then they raised us all my brothers and sisters we got different daddies and so forth and uh my uh mother went to california in 1970 and then i think she come back to uh tennessee you know maybe men around about 72 or something like that and then, you know, she went back to uh, California, man, I think around about 74, 74, 75. And then, you know, we stayed out there, you know, this 
You know, I had my brothers and sisters, it was four of us. And then this is gonna be the first place that we stayed, you know, after staying at my granddaddy house right here on 73rd and Dinka, we would go stay man at this place called Santa Barbara Arms. Now this place is, bef you know, Santa Barbara is before they changed it to Martin Luther King. And then this is right across the street from the Coliseum, man. You get the uh, the sports arena and the Coliseum, and then right behind it, man, is USC, the college. You know, I used to play around there, and I used to play men over in the parking lot, you know what I'm saying, over here when I was a little kid. I think I was about six or seven over here. And then my Uncle Dan, uh, uh my Uncle Stuff, you know what I'm saying, he would move in here, that's my mother's brother by you know what I'm saying that they got the same father but different mothers and he would move in here and then I would play in this parking lot and then I went to the uh school Menlo Menlo down the, down the street here you know what I'm saying Menlo Avenue and it was a school man I went to briefly let me see if this Menlo Menlo Avenue let's see if that school still here huh? Man, I went to this school on Menlo. Yeah, this Menlo. Man, I went to this school. Man, it could be 43rd or something. I don't know if the school is still here, but man, it should have been popping up by now. Right here it is. Man, to this school right here, man. I was in the fourth grade when I went to this school. Menlo Avenue. And man, that's where I started to have a little fights here and there, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, with the uh, kids, because I had, you know, come from, come from Chattanooga, man, and, uh, man, you know, it was kind of different and stuff, but, you know, I had a fight with a couple of kids that went to this school, and, and then we would move, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I went to Menlo, and then we would move over here, man, on, on Halldale, Man, around by 1975, and then now this the thing. Now my mother had a a, a a a friend that was like a sister, but they was kind of like relatives. Man, on my grandmama's side, they was relatives. You know, like distant relatives. My grandmama had 13 sisters, and each one of her sisters had kids, and and then you know they had a lot of relatives where well, these people from Chattanooga, Tennessee and uh this that's the mother and then this lady that I'm sitting next to name is Teresa and she was like a auntie to me. You know, we call her Aunt Therese and she used to keep me when I was a baby. She's from Chattanooga too and then she moved to Los Angeles and her and my mama used to run the streets but she used to keep me when I was a little bitty baby and then we stayed Next door, we moved to these apartments, but these apartments, these apartments, you know, wasn't built up and nice like it is, you know, man, man, in this video, you know what I'm saying? They wasn't nice like this, and they was kind of raggedy, but we stayed there, and we stayed in a couple apartments, man, within these apartments, and this is 41st and Halldale, and then, you know, it was a couple of kids, you know, it was this guy named Noah. That they stayed over here, you know. And uh man, man, I went to the school called Normandy Avenue when I moved over here. I was in the fourth grade, fourth, fifth, and, and I think maybe sixth. Man, I was at Normandy, but you know, it, it was some twins, men that stayed down the street, Turl and Gerald, that's their name, and they had a brother named Giant and, and uh man another brother. You know what I'm saying? And it was, you know, some older people stayed, you know what I'm saying, on this end of Halldale. And then it was, man, the, the kids, you know, like I said, I stayed right here, man, in these apartments. And then, you know, man, it was some kids down here on Halldale. You know, it was families on Halldale. And, and uh, man, I had a friend named Greg that stayed here stayed here and, and him and his brothers and, and he had a brother named Kim from Crenshaw Mafia we was real cool 
And then I had a friend named here, Dave, you know what I'm saying? He stayed here at the Greenwoods. His name Lil Wave. And then I had a friend named Brian staying down the street and a whole bunch of other families, Conrad and me and it was families, man, about six or seven families, man, they had kids and stuff. And uh, I would play with them in the streets, but they, you know, go home and stuff, and they was homely, you know what I'm saying? And they was kind of, you know, some kids, man, that they had some good parents that, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? They were some decent kids and stuff, and they didn't get in no trouble. And, uh, man, I was like the only one around here roaming around and stuff, man, at that time. I think I had turned about eight or nine, you know what I'm saying? By then, I think, you know, about eight or nine, I'm up and down the street. You know, me and my brothers, I can kind of go, you know, a little places because my mama was on substance abuse as well as her uh brothers and sisters that went out to California. My mama was on hair run and every spoon in the house that I ate off was burnt. Every spoon I ate off was burnt. You know, and, and uh, my mama was on substance abuse. And then this is an image. Me and my mother, when she come back from uh, Texas, you know, she was on, you know, after uh, being on hair run, she got on cocaine, you know, I think in the 80s, if if cocaine come out in the 80s, she was addicted to cocaine in the 80s, you know, after uh, being on heroin for a whole bunch of years and stuff, and uh, man, I ain't never had nothing, I ain't grew up with nothing, you know what I'm saying, and it was uh, hard back then, and uh, man, there was times we didn't have food in the house, and, and uh, man, I have to, uh, you know, my friends had fruit trees, fruit trees, you know, I think he had an avocado tree, uh, uh, Dave and them had an avocado tree and an orange tree and a persimmon tree, i go get their fruits, you know what I'm saying, and then, you know, man, it was sugar cane in their backyard, man, on the other side of the wall, and, uh, man, I used to get the fruits, man, when we didn't have no food, you know, my mama, you know, being a misused the book, government funds and stuff and it was a lemon tree right here and, and you know all around the neighborhood I spotted where the fruit trees was were places where you can get something to eat and me and my brothers and sisters we'll go eat off them fruit trees when you know we didn't have no food you know this is just before I start to go down the street to a uh, Ravs that's a grocery store on Western and, and uh well sound well, Western and Martin Luther King, but it was, you know, Santa Barbara and Martin Luther King. You know, it was a store on Western where you could take people bags. They had rails, uh, rails around the uh, stove where the bags, the baskets couldn't go, leave off and in front of the stove because the rails. And uh, let me see if I could pull that image up with rails. Let me see. With rails. Let's see if I can get rails. Man, on here. Rouse. Let's see. I got an image somewhere. Here it is, right here. Look, you see right here. I mean, you couldn't bring the baskets past this because we used to take the baskets. We used to take the baskets and, and man put our clothes on them and, and take them to the laundromat. You know, and it'd be like a train going to the laundromat. You know, four, five baskets full of clothes and, and uh, you know. And, and me and we'll take them to the laundromat, you know, and, and get the baskets and we'll take the baskets and take the basket off the uh, thing and ride around, make carts out of it, you know what I'm saying? But they fixed it where you couldn't, you know, take your uh, bags, uh, uh, the baskets to the cars and, you know, so the kids hung out up here to make change, money and stuff. And I'm going to go into that. Now, I start hanging up here uh, uh, making five and six dollars. You know, taking, you know, bags to people's cars and stuff. And then I would buy, you know, some sandwich meat and, you know, some Kool-Aid and, you know, some other little stuff, man. And, you know, head home, man, and feed my brothers and sisters and stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you, you know what I'm saying, that there was a gang up here called the Harlem Crips. And they was hanging out up here. D-Mac, D-Dog, Left Bone, and Squad O, and a fruit of Charlie, men and a few other ones, men that they hung out here and they were robbed the kids. They were robbed the kids. Now I'm gonna get into that. You know what 
for me. And then, you know, me and I kind of like kick-started, you know, this game, men in the neighborhood. Now, everybody know that men on Halldale, men on Halldale in a, uh, men on Halldale in a, uh, men there wasn't no kids. Now, the kids used to go up to the store with me after school and we'll hustle and stuff, take people bags to their car. But but the kids on Halldale, man, you, man, they had, you know, a mama and a daddy and a, man, they're gone on in the house, man, when trouble come. You know, when them gang members, man, start sweating and jumping out from behind cars, following us home and beating some of us up, where the kids on Halldale stop going up to the store. And, and uh, you know, they stay at home, man, because, you know, they got... You know, a bed and, and a house and the mom and the daddy and they eating breakfast in the morning. So they ain't just keep going up to the store, going, you know, men confronting them gang members up there that was robbing us. But me, I had to go because my mama was on drugs and there wasn't no food in the house all the time. So I had to go up to the store and then me and eventually, you know, I would, you know, be confronted by them gang members. Now, during this time, man, it wasn't no gangs. Man, it wasn't no gangs in the neighborhood, and it wasn't no gangs on Dalton. I'm the only kid around there walking around doing stuff and, 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 and can go anywhere and can basically, you know, move around and stuff. So, you know, I'm on all the blocks. Man, I'm on Dalton, Halldale, and Brighton, and there's no gangs around there. The only gang men that's in the area, man, is going to be the 40 Crips, and it's a few older dudes, men on Brighton, and then, man, it's an older dude named Doc Robb. He he was from the 30s, man. He stayed by the laundromat, man, man, that we would take our clothes to. He was an older dude, and he was cool with with everybody, you know what I'm saying? So he can come to the neighborhood, you know, and uh, man, his name Doc Rob, man, he had a low rider. Man, he, and he, he was a 30s crip, and uh, man, it wasn't no gangs, man, you know what I'm saying, other than the 30 crips, men in the neighborhood, and this is where Doc Rob stayed at. Doc, Doc Rob stayed right here, men in this house right there. That's where Doc Rob stayed at on. Dinker and 39th, and then this is where we used to go wash our clothes at after we take the baskets from the store, man, from this wash house right here on Dinker and, and Martin Luther King, and then that's the police station, and then to the left, man, used to be the Rav store, you know, as you go up to uh, Martin Luther King and Western and past the car wash, and uh, so, I man, it wasn't no gangs men in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? And it was, you know, men some good kids that stayed on the block, man. And I had a friend, you know what I'm saying, named Mo House. We eventually, you know, start calling him CKD. He stayed on Dalton. He gonna be like, after my friend David on Halldale, I mean, he gonna really be like the second one that I met in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Because we went, to the school and we used to walk home men from school together and uh <coughs> me he stayed in this house right here you know what i'm saying he stayed in this house you know this ckd i got a picture of him you know what i'm saying he's he's in prison man and he got two life sentences man i hate to see it but he got two life sentences and uh but he's a good dude man and i would you know take him with me man when I start doing all kind of stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing that uh he would join you know what I'm saying me all right that's him right there that's CKD right there and and, and that's me we in Inglewood you know taking this picture but he lived in this house and then I had a friend named you know Batfrog man Batfrog lived in this house and then you know I had you know the Man, the Holcombs, you know, lived in this house right down the street. And, uh, man, it's basically, you know, you know what I'm saying? It was a few other families, man, that lived, you know what I'm saying, on the block. But basically, you know what I'm saying, that was it. Man, in the, you know, middle of the 70s, all, all the way up to about 
76. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I say, man, I used to go to the store, man, man to Ralph's, and uh, take people or uh, baskets, men to their car. And, and uh, man, that's how I, you know, hustled and fed my family. And then, man, it used to be, you know, gang members up here, man, to where they start robbing us, man, robbing us, man. I'm talking about, you know, we go to the store, make some change, and then the gang members will jump out, man. It was some girls that stayed across the street, man. They mama lead to go to work, and there's about three of them, and all the gang members will stay over at their house, and then they can look from their porch and see who all making change. And then when you, you know, leave to go home, they'll pop up from behind cars, man, on, on, on LaSalle and Harvard, you know what I'm saying, on, 41st, man, you know what I'm saying, my, uh, going home, you know what I'm saying, on this street right here, you know what I'm saying, going home, and, uh, me and the gangs will pop out on you, you know what I'm saying, and then take your money, so like I said, my mama was on heroin, man, and, and uh, so we ain't have nothing to eat, so I would, you know, start fighting them guys, you know what I'm saying, like I said, the guys on Halldale, man, they had, you know, mamas and daddies to feed them, so they, didn't too much get caught up in these fights and stuff. And they didn't want to go down to the store and hang out knowing that these folks, you know, these guys robbing and beating you up, you know. And uh, so I would go up to the store by myself. And uh, man, it didn't it start to be some families, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, these guys would catch you down here. Man, I remember one time over here, man, the guys jumped out, man, and uh, robbed me and stuff. Man, I think this on LaSalle and Harvard, man. I went home. Man, and we was hungry that day, and, and, and then, you know, I just had to start fighting, and, uh, man, they would, uh, kind of, like, back up off me, man, and I, you know, can go up to the store, man, and, you know, hustle, man, a little bit, and, and uh, they wouldn't just too much bother me, man, and I started to have to hang with them, with D-Mac and D-Dog, walking the alleys, and all that other stuff, but when they start robbing the other kids, I wouldn't be willing to do that. I kind of like hold back and stuff, you know. Why, you know, they rob the other kids. Sometimes I try to let the other kids let know that, hey man, they coming, man. They, you know what I'm saying? So they can get away and stuff. But I had to hang with them, you know what I'm saying? And, and then, man, it started to uh, be some families. Mean that, uh, uh, man, it was a family that moved over here on Dalton. Now I'm the only kid that's walking around and getting around hustling and stuff you know mo house and all them man they mama you know worked and stuff and, and you know uh, uh k rod you know rodney the house that i show you you know what i'm saying his mama grandmama and them work uncles and them work granddaddy and it was like semi-rich to me you know what i'm saying i got a picture of k rod i'm gonna probably pull that picture up but uh i mean it's a family move here in 1977 man it was three brothers one named lebo one named Cat, we call him KC, and the youngest brother named Ronald. Now, Ronald would start hanging with me. I'm a few years older than their youngest brother, and they would start hanging with me. Me and the brother, uh, uh, Rodney, uh, you know what I'm saying, one of the Hokums, you know what I'm saying, Rodney Hokum, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to see if I could pull his picture up, you know what I'm saying. He would start hanging with me, man, and we would go up to the store. And, uh, you know, make change and stuff. And, and uh, you know, me and the uh, gang members, man, uh, start, you know, bothering us and stuff. And, and uh, you know, we'll make it back home. You know what I'm saying? Be, me and in one piece. But uh, I had to uh, start fighting them guys. You know what I'm saying? Because, man, we, you know, they ain't had no food at home. So, you know, man, man I couldn't, you know, keep getting robbed and stuff and then going home and ain't nothing to eat but but this is k-rod right here this is k-rod right here this is the guy that start hanging out with me and stuff you know like i said wasn't no gang activity in the neighborhood and it's just basically us three you know mo house moved to paramount you know he would come back in the neighborhood but you know what i'm saying I mean, he moved to a uh, paramount and and, and, and and then it started to be me and some more families moved on the block. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, the family right, the man right here, you know what I'm saying? My closest friend, you know what I'm saying? His three brothers, you know, the oldest brother and then the 
the, the middle brother who I ran with, who I ran with all three of them, but the middle and the youngest brother, man, I ran with, and I got a picture, man, of the youngest brother, man, he just, oh, man, he didn't, you know, need his brother bad, man, whenever you, you know, take your memories, and your, your folks' memories and destroying them and stuff, man, that's a bad thing, you know. All right, you know, me and him, man, we would, you know, do all kind of stuff, man, all kind of stuff, burglarizing and everything. But I'm the most active kid in the neighborhood because, you know, my mama's on heroin and they ain't just got no leash on me and my mama be nodding. I could be gone up to the, you know, 12, 1, 2 in the morning, you know, as these guys had to get in. Man, about 8, 9 o'clock, man, they had to be in the house. I could be out about 12, 1, 2 in the morning because my mama, you know, nodding. And, and uh, so, but Rodney and, and Ronald, man, man, were hang with me and stuff. Man, like I say this before, any gangs get in the neighborhood, but, but they brought us was from Athens Park. They was from Athens Park. So, you know what I'm saying? I got some guys with me that'll fight. So then we go up to the, uh, Ravs, man, I'm starting to fight these dudes up there now. You know what I'm saying? I'm leading the way. Man, I got a, you know, man, the guy that'll fight, and then he got some brothers, you know what I'm saying, that'll fight. So I start fighting, man, the 30s. I start kicking it with them, man, and start going, man, the battle, you know what I'm saying, against them. And, uh, man, that would kind of like form the Dalton block. You know, like I say, it was other families, you know what I'm saying, in the area, but, man, they go home and got something to eat. Did they got mamas, uncles, did they go to work and, and they had something to eat and had clothes in the room, men to sleep in in the house over their head, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, they wasn't staying, you know, out to go battle with these folks. And then I can remember one time, man, I'm with one of the brothers, man, and we on Western and D Mac and them come out of nowhere. Me and then hit me in the nose, broke my nose, man. He had a, some spikes on. And then, you know, me and the other brother got away, you know what I'm saying? I got away too, but after they done broke my nose. You know what I'm saying? So I'm constantly in battle with them. And the only reason the 30 is the, the 30s Harlem Crips is coming around this neighborhood to fight and, and, and stuff is because me and, and, and how I was battling against with them. You know what I'm saying? Against them and stuff. That's the only reason that the Harlems start coming around. And then they got a little story about how the gang on Dalton started. But I'm telling you, it's incorrect. It's incorrect. And they know it's incorrect. And I don't know how they let them folks put that false history up, knowing that it ain't true. But what happened is, after I moved away, and some more folks moved around that they heard some of the stories and then they done told them folks, them, you know what I'm saying, that lying stuff. And then this, this would be the history, me and this own, uh, see, Dog and Gangsta Bloods. Like I say, man, them kids, everybody had to go home. Everybody had to go home. Everybody had a house. Everybody had food to eat. They didn't have no reason to stay out and fight the gang members because everybody had a house to sleep in. Everybody had food to eat. Everybody had brand new shoes. Everybody had Christmas presents and, and, and all that bicycles, brand new bicycles and stuff. So none of the kids around on Dalton and Halldale had any intentions of fighting the 30s or going against them in any kind of way. It was me. It was me because I had conflict with them up at the store. You know what I'm saying? So this is how my life went. All right. I mean, the Dalton Gangster Bloods were on Dalton Avenue, south of Martin Luther King. But the neighborhood is not active and faded out in the mid-80s. That, that's because a whole bunch of us left. And me, you know, the main person that just got conflict with them uh, uh, left. You know what I'm saying? I got caught in Bakersfield, me and some of the guys in the neighborhood, Mohouse CKD, and then, you know, we was robbing jewelry stores. I'm going to get to all that. You know what I'm saying? But let me clear this up. You know, this false history. Look, in 1977, a family moved on to Dalton Avenue, and the oldest brother was an Athens Park member. That's going to be Lebo. Cat was, too. And at this time, there was no real gang activity on Dalton. Now, there wasn't no 
gang activity. They gonna be like the, you know what I'm saying, the uh, men, the, you know what I'm saying, the first gang members and stuff. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't Crips. There were Rolling 30 Crips and Dinka Park Crips just to the north who knew people in the area. That's false. You see, like I told you, that the only Crip that come in the neighborhood is going to be Doc Rob, and he was in his 30s back then. We was teens. He was an older dude. He didn't even hang with the kids. He come in the neighborhood to kick it with the older dudes that he went to school with and stuff like that that was in their 30s and 40s. That's going to be the only 30 that come in the neighborhood men to kick it. You know what I'm saying? So this is false history right here. And look, it's, and, and and then it says, Dinka Park Crips to the north who knew people in the area. There was actually a time when they organized street football games with the 30s on Dalton. That is false history. We ain't never, ever played, ever played football with the Harlem Crips. And how did, that's false. And what happened is, on Dalton, they shot me. You know what I'm saying? L Mac shot me after creeping down the block. You know, I've been battling with them guys from up at the store. I'm battling with them guys up at the store. And then, you know, one of the families that had moved in from Van Ness, Frank, a uh, uh, bird, he uh, whooped a uh, uh, left bone men up at uh, Firestone. You know, on um, Martin Luther King, you know what I'm saying? Many got at him. Let me see if I can even get down there. I might can even get down there. Let's see. Many whooped him in Firestone. Whooped him on Firestone parking lot and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I had been scrapping with the dudes. And the next incident that will happen with the 30s is Bird. Bird, uh, Bird whooped left bone right here, man, in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, this will make all the young 30s come out. This will make them come out. And then one time, you know, we playing football. We done formed a little bit now because I'm in conflict with them. You know what I'm saying? And the guys that I, you know, growed up with in the neighborhood, man, they kind of like, you know, coming in, man, to assist. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, the ones on Dalton, the families moved in. They was gang members and stuff, so they going to fight. You know what I'm saying? And I had they little brothers with me. So we battling this stuff. That would start the uh, Dalton. You know what I'm saying? That would start the Dalton Gangster Bloods. Me battling with the 30s. And then they start coming around. You know what I'm saying? In our neighborhood. And we had the band together. You know what I'm saying? We had the band together. And that's what started the 30s. But it started because me turning against them up at the store. When it was enough of us in the neighborhood to resist them. You know, at first, I couldn't resist them by myself. I have fights with them individually. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, man, I couldn't resist all of them. So I had to join them. But when it became kids in the neighborhood that were fight, man, I had them with me. And we was fighting them. And then they start coming to the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? The Harlem start coming to the neighborhood. See, the only thing separated us Men from them is Martin Luther King, man, they on the other side. All men, they, they whole set, the heart of them is right on the other side. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, one time we kicking it on Dalton, you know what I'm saying, playing football. And, and this is where they get that organized football stuff, but it's false history. One time we playing football on the block. You know, my homie Rito stayed right there. Rito and Mohouse stayed there in a... Uh, K-Rod stayed there, and Charles stayed down the street. There's a few more other families, and we was all out here. And it's a bunch of Dalton members that that's alive today, and they know this true. You know what I'm saying? They know this true, and they know I ain't going to tell no lie. They know I ain't going to tell no lie, but I'm documenting my history, the founder of the Israelite Brotherhood, all right? So we playing football on the street. Man, we playing football on the street. And L. Magnum snuck down the street, a crip, man, a Harlem crip, and then he jump out, man, from behind the car with the pistol, and, and, and then guess what? Everybody took off. Every, I mean, man, it was about 15 kids. It was about 15 of us, men in the street playing tag football, and then everybody took off besides me. I'm the only one that didn't run, and I had 
time to run and they'll tell you this this is legend in the neighborhood you know what i'm saying this is legend in the neighborhood and, and, and then how dude pulled it you know what i'm saying he already had his pistol pulled out and everybody ran i didn't run you know what i'm saying i just strolled up to him casually and, and say put the gun down and let's go head up and then he shot me and then i ran Right here, man, after he shot me, man, I ran right there, man, and fell right there. Man, he could have killed me. He could have just started pumping bullets and stood over me. You know what I'm saying? He could have did that. But almighty, y'all had other plans. Almighty, y'all had other plans. But I fell right there. You see what I'm saying? I fell right there. And uh, that started, that would start the Dalton block right there. That would start the Dalton block because, man, ain't no fire shots and, and i've been hit and uh me we used to uh stay in this boarding house man where my mama didn't pay rent man and we got you know put out me in that little man apartment right there that we stayed in when i originally came to right next door me to my auntie that on Halldale. it was a a boarding house man with this older lady man bless her man I ain't miss Dorothy McIntyre, she was from Palo Alto. She was a nurse, a RN, but she bought this house and she was renting rooms and she rented my mama a room. Now, it was a lot of people stayed on this block, men from Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? That that my mama friends, that's like Carlin, Carlin and Sean. You know what I'm saying? They used to stay right here, my friends, the cousins stay right here. Man, man, I had a friend named Wump Dog. You know what I'm saying? Wumpa Dog, Steve, me and him. Man, I would start hanging with him. Man, to go burglarize cars downtown, man. And uh, man, the, the, uh, man, the gun that we used to take with us, man, his girlfriend, end up killing him, Lisa. And we was like family. Man, it's a trip how Israelites could be like family and don't even know each other. But if it's a bunch of us in the community, how, man, we'll grow up like families. The kids grow up like families. That's how it was in the 70s. We'll grow up like family, man, and everybody know each other, and the parents know the kids and watched out for the kids, and it was like that in this neighborhood, man, that I growed in, man, where everybody know everybody, and right now today, people still know me, man, and got love for me, and my name still ring a bell. Like I said, I'm the most active child around her you know what i'm saying because my mom on hair run and stuff you know and but but if i was gonna show where some more people stayed that we would go stay at their house you know every now and then you know what i'm saying when my mama couldn't make the uh the uh the uh payments man at the uh place you know we stayed at this boarding house the the, the lady dorothy mcintyre owned it so when i got shot on dalton this is where i would be in the room and house Men sleeping on the floor, you know what I'm saying? But but the lady, the man, the lady was nice, man. And one of the uh, rooms, man, to help, man, because she helped people, the older people, the senior citizens. She had some of them up in there, and she put me in their room, and I wasn't even supposed to be in there. Man, the lady, man, that looked after me, you know what I'm saying? Dorothy McIntyre, man, a older lady, man, a Hebrew lady, man, you know what I'm saying? That rented rooms, man. She knew my mama was on substance of bruce and stuff and, and uh we used to stay there and uh man i had uh got shot over there on hall deal uh, i mean on dalton and uh while we was playing football all right now now let me tell you this man it used to be you know my my auntie this lady right here had a uh had a uh old man named fly Look where that picture out of her. My Aunt Therese had an old man named Fly. They had about five brothers, and they robbed the jewelry stores and hit licks, man. And I used to uh, beg them. Now, 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 before then, man, I'm going out, me and the, uh, me and the brother KC going out robbing, as well as back frogs. And, you know, I used to go take bites with him. And, uh, I'm king, I was king robber in the neighborhood, undisputed, undisputed, there's nobody around 
between Dalton and Haldale that, that put in more work than me. I ain't trying to brag. I ain't trying to brag, but some of them guys are watch this video, and, and you know what I'm saying? They know already that I put in more work than anybody around there. Man, I'm talking about me and me and this. Me, me and the... Me and the two oldest brothers, the, the youngest brother, I ain't, you know, we just kicked it and, you know, had fun and stuff. But but the, the oldest brother, KC, me and him would, man, go, man, from from Olympic, we'll walk all the way down Normandy to Olympic and Western and, and oh, man, it was on. You know what I'm saying? And uh, me and him would uh, be jacking and stuff as well as the brother Lebo, but ain't nobody got more jacking time than me that i was king king robber man in the neighborhood and i used to go rob man like it was man like like it was a a, a, a dance you know what i'm saying that how that's all i ever did was rob and then i got this friend right here named Baffrog. Baffrog now Baffrog, me and him man and i started out snatching purses and taking bicycles taking bicycles and snatching purses with him and uh oh man you know he would go to the routes that i established you know the, the robbing routes you know why man i had robbing routes just areas i would go frequent you know what i'm saying like a predator and, and, and see if i can catch some prey and, and man the, the, this brother when he got out of prison man the fruit times man is all he did Man was go to the areas, man that we robbed in, man, and, and uh, man that you know got him through. You know what I'm saying? And, and then it's gonna be my uh, man, my homie, Baffrog right here, and Baffrog, man got the uh, death penalty. You know what I'm saying? The big brother right here got the death penalty. You know what I'm saying? And this would be my uh, homie right here. You know what I'm saying? And I would, you know be out doing everything with him and uh you know man like i said my mama didn't you know my mama was on heroin and then got on cocaine and then while we was kids she used to take us to the store and, and steal the lunch meat and i ain't throwing no salt on my mama it's just how it is i'm just telling you how almighty y'all took me from the curses and brung me into the heritage that i have and i got the best history in the whole israelite community all right, look, man, you see what it say? Look, he's a cold-blooded killer, cold-blooded killer, somebody who terrified the Los Angeles streets. Now, the man, they say he got 24. Man, he got about a good 200 uh, 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 robbers, you know what I'm saying, under his belt. He got about a 200 belt notch. You know what I'm saying with the robberies, and uh, but he on death row. That's my homie, man, and I got love for him. And not man, I'ma try to get the Israelite Brotherhood to him, and you know, hopefully he can learn about his heritage, man, before they try to put him to sleep. You know what I'm saying? But well, before they try to put him to sleep, but uh, that's bad for all right there. And you know, he was one of the gang members. You know, we were one of the members, man, on Dalton, and uh. All right, so you know, man, I explained that how I kick started the uh, the uh, Dalton thing, and, and and then you know, man, there was a uh, man some families that moved in from V and G. Now this is the thing that after some of the Ty Bud and you know Ty Bud from Dalton and of uh, uh, some of the Ty, uh, Dalton members leave, and we have to move. You know what I'm saying? Had to move out of state. You know, I paroled out of state after I had got caught robbing the jury store. I mean, explain that. And then how the brothers that moved men out of town, you know what I'm saying, that the ones that was left went over to VNG. You know, we had some, so, I mean, a family that moved into the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, that was from Van Ness Gangster. And, and uh, man, one of the youngest brothers grew up with us, went to school with us and hung with us and stuff. And then to where I asked that when the, other members left that, that the remaining members from Dalton went over to VNG. You know what I'm saying? Went over to VNG and even CKD. You know what I'm saying? From VNG. Alright. So, you know, 
I mean, the gang thing started because I was having problems and, and fighting with the guys up there at, at Ralph's for uh, for the change. You know what I'm saying? Me and for the money. And that I ain't know Harlem Crips come play football with us. And, and, and then, you know, stuff started from there. No, they shot me while we was playing football. That's the real story. You know, that's the real truth, man, about Dalton. Man, man, Dalton. All right, uh, now, now, after all this, man, you know what I'm saying, I'm, you know, starting to uh, fight back, so them dudes ain't just coming in no more like they used to, but because, you know, a little firepower present and stuff, and, uh, you know, we ain't playing, you know what I'm saying, and then after they shot me, me and sometime, me and KC, I used to, uh, you know, if you go down 39th, Man in Halldale, man to the uh, man. I'm gonna go down the block, man. If you go down the uh, 39th and Halldale, or uh, uh, 30, 39th and Brighton, man, that's where all the uh, man, that's where all the uh, guys used to be at. You know what I'm saying? That the, the opposite gang members all up in here, all up in here was their territory. And back in the 70s and 80s, man, they was everywhere around here. And uh. This is where they used to be at, man, up in here. And, uh, me and I used to walk across the boulevard and then come running back, man, to the neighborhood. And I ain't gonna get into all them war stories and stuff, even though the stuff that I'm talking about, the statute of limitation, you know what I'm saying, gone on it. So ain't nobody finna get in trouble, man, about nothing that I'm saying, you know, these 30 year old robberies and stuff. But anyway, man, I would get into it with them dudes, man, and they'll hang out on this end, and I'll go pay them a visit every once in a while, and they start to know, you know, not to just, you know, be falling up on us, you know, they'll catch us slipping, I mean, they'll catch us slipping, and, and you know, get somebody, but uh, just far as just coming on in, that was over with, and, and, and man, and then I started to uh, rob the uh, jury stores, you know, with my uh, aunties, Boyfriend, if I can get this thing up to the uh, lock up, man. Me and my auntie's, uh, me and my auntie's boyfriend, my aunt Teresa boyfriend, named Fly, Fly, uh, and, and his brothers robbed the jewelry stores and stuff. And uh, man, I used to beg them guys, man, take me, man, take me with you. You know, I used to see them pull up, man, all around here. Cadillacs and BMWs and Mercedes and stuff, man. And I used to be playing on a porch, climbing this tree right here, climbing this tree right here. And then, man, I say, take me, man, take me. You know, I used to always tell them, take me, take me. And then finally, they said, come on. And then I start robbing jury stores. I'm the first in the neighborhood to start hitting licks. And then I brought my homeboy, man, into the pitch. You know what I'm saying? And now it was a fruit jewelry store robbers. Matter of fact, did this whole area right here had the jewelry store robbers. All the guys that robbed jewelry stores in California, they just happened to stay man in this little area right here. And then the coldest thing, the police station was right around the corner, man. If they just wanted to find somebody, all they had to do was just drive around the corner, cause that's where all the jewelry store robbers was. And I uh start getting down with them, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, man, I didn't hit three, four licks, man, and I, you know, flash cash on my homeboys, man, a couple of thousand, and then they come on in, you know what I'm saying, and then, then we robbing jury stores, you know, then we going all over, you know, these guys would go out of town and rob jury stores, and they'll take us, you know, and, uh, man, we'll rob jury stores, and then, one time we went on the lick, and, uh, Man, we went on the lick in uh, Bakersville, in uh, Kern County, and, and uh, we got caught. Uh, best Buy, you know what I'm saying? It's a Best Buy. We went in there. Uh, you know, I had the golf clubs. I, uh, uh, my friend smashed the case, and uh, man, it was an off-duty sheriff in the store. And uh, so as soon as we ran out the store with the jury, you know, in the bullet case, filled, filled it up, and, and uh, man, we get in the car. Man, the, the dude shoot the tires out the car, shoot the tires. 
You know what I'm saying? Shoot the tires on the drivers, the men on the passenger side, both of them, front and back. All right? And then after that, me and a white dude just come ramming the car with, with, with a, one of them Broncos like, like O.J. Simpson had. You know, with one of them type Broncos. And uh, rammed the car and then jumped out with a 30R6 with them deer guns. Man, he held us hostage. Held us hostage. And, uh, man, we, we couldn't do nothing. So then I got sent, <coughs> man, to D. with Nelson. <coughs> Juvenile Hall. And then, you know, uh, uh, I, I mean, Kern County Juvenile Hall. And, and uh, man, while I was in that Juvenile Hall, man, I was taking them kids down through there. They had a little gang called the Spoony G's. And the Spoony G's, man, they wasn't used to the violence, man, that we could unleash. And, and, and we unleashed it on them. And, uh, man, them folks got tired of me. Man, I think I might have put one of the kids' eyes out. And, and, and then, man, they got so tired, man, of me fighting, man, that they tried me as adult and hurry up, man, and got me up out of there and then sent me to uh, Northern California. And then I would end up in D. Witt Nelson, man, with seven years, you know what I'm saying? D. Witt Nelson is a, 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 a center, a, a youth authority center, you know what I'm saying? I would end up here, you know what I'm saying? I would end up here in, uh, I would end up here, and then, man, I got to fighting with the kids, man, you know, the uh, with the gangs and stuff, you know, a, a dude from Grape Street who was serving some, the, 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 the orange juice and the grape juice in the morning, you know, he had to fill them up, and then he knew that we was gang members from the opposite side, and he used to say, yeah, you got to drink this grape juice, ain't grape juice, you know, he from Grape Street. You know, one of them Grape Street Crips. And, uh, but I got to fighting with him. You know what I'm saying? I had to whoop him out up in there. And, and then them folks say, that's the end. You know what I'm saying? You out of here. And then they sent me to uh, Folsom State Prison. Man, I went to Vacaville first. Man, I mean, I went to Vacaville. And then they sent me to Folsom. And then that's me in the one building. And, um, and I'm like the youngest gang member, man, in the prison. And then... Then I'm in the prison with Peabody and a uh, uh, rooster. Man, I know them personally. I done exercised with both of them personally and lived in the building with Peabody, man, for about a year in the three building. You know what I'm saying? And, and me and Peabody was, you know, I mean, he was cool. And rooster, man, I used to hang with the BLs. Man, that's like I was explaining. I had did a video one time with, with this guy was talking about the BL saying there wasn't that many of them in Folsom and um saying that's a lie and it was a whole bunch of BLs in Folsom you know and after Rooster they had this brother named Mo from Miller Gangster that did, that was next in charge and then you had Tommy Joe Holmes man you had both of the dog brothers from Swan you had Bosco from Bloodstone really man there's a whole bunch up and then man I was in the three building, man. Man, I had this short uh, uh, city from a uh, Fresno named Shorty, named Shorty. Now, now I'm gonna blood up in there. Now, you know what I'm saying? Man, I got a little respect, and uh, man, it was this BGF man that come to the cell, and, and you know, man, man, I had a cellie man that washed clothes. He worked it for the uh. Man, man, for the officer's laundry, man, he pressed the officer's clothes and wash them. You know, they got a in-house kitchen in, you know, place where the officers, the, the guards can get their uniforms washed and pressed. You know, so he pressed and washed clothes for a living and stuff and shine shoes. So I ain't really like that, but, you know, he hustled and stuff. And, and uh, me and it was the BGLs come trying to put a little pressure on him and stuff. And, and uh... Me and one of the BGLs came to my cell uh, uh, talking smack, this dude named Big George. Talking smack, me and the shorty. Me and the shorty was cool with me. So I told, you know, but because the BGL's supposed to be cool with the bloods. So I told George, man, get up off my door, man, with that noise. And then, you know, me he left. But in the, in the morning time when we was coming back from breakfast, his silly 
was in front of him and kind of was like blocking the way to go past. And then, you know, the dude, Big George, and he benched by 400 pounds. He called me and said, uh, uh, hey, what's up, man? And, and then, you know, I was about to sell him and he tried to grab me and pull me in this cell. But man, my reactions were so quick. I hit him in the jaw. You know, he had a, 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 a glass jaw, man. He was weak. You know what I'm saying? Some guys that be big and got a lot of muscles, man, their jaws be weak. Man, and man, I hit him in the jaw and uppercutted him. And he let me go, but, but he come flying up out the cell. Man, we fighting on the uh, floor. You know, I, it was a other blood named Rick Rock that was there, but you know, it was 25 of us in the building, but all the other ones stayed on the other side of the building. And it's the thing about the three building in Folsom, and whoever been to Folsom know this, that, that the infirmary is connected to it. Man, I could see everybody that get stabbed, that get hurt, that got to go to the infirmary, had to go past my cell. With me and dude fighting and stuff, and uh, the guard fired a, a fired around, man, the mini 14, man, you know, we both went to the hole, me and did not come back, you know what I'm saying, to, uh, 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 man, we went to the hole in New Folsom, and then they sent us back, man, the old Folsom, man, about, man, I think I did about 30 days in the hole, or something like that, and, uh, then, man, I had another Sally, man, another Sally from uh, Long Beach, man, I would, uh, man, I would tie, uh, uh, me and dude got into an argument, man, in the middle of the night. Me and the silly from Long Beach got into an argument, man, in the middle of the night. And, uh, man, I had to tie dude up. Man, I had to tie dude up and uh, tied him up with the sheet in the blanket, you know, because, you know, in Folsom, man, you go to sleep, and man, your silly can kill you while you sleep, and they do that sometimes. So I tied my silly up with the bed sheet in the blanket, had him looking like a mummy. Well, well, he couldn't move. I, mean, I could have took him out, but you know I ain't, you know, get down like I ain't want to do him like that. And uh, so in the morning time, man, you know what I'm saying? Man, he had to get up out of there. And then when, when he got up out of there, you know what I'm saying? He told some of his uh, man, man some of his homeboys, you know what I'm saying? From uh, man, his homeboys from uh, man from Long Beach. And then, me and I guess they told Peabody, and then Peabody sent Green Eyes, man, it's this brother named Green Eyes from Bounty Hunters. You know what I'm saying? He on a deceased list. I'm trying to pull it up. And, uh, man, I was in the in the fire building, man. I had left the uh, three building and moved over to the fire building. And then, the, man, the dude, uh, uh, Green Eyes, came, man, and Man, they called me and said, hey, man, 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 come here. Man, and then they stole on me. You know what I'm saying? Hit me in my eye, man. It didn't knock me down when it didn't hurt me. You know what I'm saying? It startled me. And I was like, what? Uh, you know what I'm saying? This sucker done, you know, stole on me and stuff. And, uh, man, I, uh, I, I had green eyes marked down for destruction. Man, I hated him after that. You know what I'm saying? After Green Eyes pulled that number, man, on me and stuff. Man, I, you know what I'm saying? Uh, man, I hated Green Eyes. I was trying to pull his name up. You know what I'm saying? He on the, he's on the uh, bounty hunter list. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, he would, uh, he would uh, hit me in Folsom. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's the only thing, man, that really happened to me and then man I go to uh man I go to uh man I parole let, let me see if we can find the bounty hunters. Let's see if we can find the bounty hunters. Look man you know if we made it man to the uh list man that you know what I'm saying we had to be something serious. You know what I'm saying? And uh like I say man I I started there wasn't no gangs around. I mean it wasn't no gangs Men in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Man, it wasn't none. And then, you know what I'm saying? When I started having problems with the, uh, with the, uh, with the, uh, when I started having problems with Charlie and D Mac, men and all them, then that's when the 30s started coming around and stuff. But, you know, the dude, 
green ass stole on me. You know what I'm saying? And I was so pissed off, man. It just, man, you know, you can't be getting hit in prison and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And don't retaliate and stuff. But dude stole on me and stuff. And man, I was, man, I was furious. And, uh, why don't you see old green eyes? You see old, what? Oh, green eyes, and they ain't trying to be no Israelite men that's hating. You know what I'm saying? And this is the past, but uh, I'm telling y'all my past so you'll know what the Israelite Brotherhood found us about. You know what I'm saying? All right, so, you know, man, I would leave Folsom. Man, I would parole from Folsom, man. It's the thing. Me paroling from Folsom, man, they know that I'm an active gang member and stuff. And, uh, Man, they trying to spread the gang culture, and then that's what happened and stuff. And then I would end up, you know, in the Tennessee prisons. I robbed the Jewish, though. Man, in Chattanooga, man, I fell on hard times. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to always go back, man, to what you used to doing. And, and then, you know, me robbing the Jewish, those men in California and all the other places, man, I fell on hard times. Now, but what I didn't tell y'all, Man, that, that I got an auntie. Man, my uncle married a Hispanic woman, my Aunt Martha, man. And she lived in Los Angeles, man. And when I was a kid, whenever I can get over their house, man, I can get something to eat. You know, I can get something to eat and stuff, man. And she fed me and stuff. And the reason that I'm saying this, man, that's her daughter, man, and her grandkids, you know. And then this will be a picture, man, of her right there. That's my Aunt Martha, and then that's my Uncle Stuff, man. He look just like my granddaddy, and then that's my Aunt Martha, and then that's his daughter, man. He been married to her for 50 years. And the reason that I say this, because the, uh, man, the peoples, uh, man, the Hispanics are not the Israelites. They are not the Israelites, you know, and, and I got an auntie that's Hispanic. So I go to show you that I ain't got nothing against the Hispanics for you individuals that's in the camps, man, that, that might, you know, come across this video. All right, so then I end up, man, in the Tennessee prisons. Man, in the Tennessee prisons. Man, I done been to, man, to all the Tennessee prisons just about. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> MTRC. MTRC. Man, West High done been to West High. Northeast. Northeast. Morgan County. Brushy Mountain. You know what I'm saying? All them camps. And then when I was in them camps, Man, I started that same gang stuff that I learned from Peabody and Rooster, man. And I started to click. And then, you know, man, the, uh, man, it was awful. And, man, I was keeping the same thing going on, man, that I had learned in California, in the California prisons and stuff, man. I was stabbing dudes and getting folks stabbed and all kind of stuff, man, to where the folks sent me to brush him out. You know, them folks sent me to Brushy Mountain. And then, you know, Brushy Mountain, they got a high security annex man in the back. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, man, I did years up in there. You know what I'm saying? I did years in what they call the tombs. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, man, when I had, uh, man was in there just before I had came, man, it's this brother, uh, uh had, a, uh, man, some Israelite, history man and uh a book and uh, i was reading the book and uh i didn't know you know what i'm saying i had been familiar with our israelite heritage man a little bit but i didn't know you know what i'm saying that much but while i was reading the book man uh, uh this book right here man i never did get this book back to the brother man after reading this book right here man i learned man that we was the Israelites, man, from reading the curses and so forth. You know what I'm saying? I even had a old uh, uh, African name, Siku Tayari is what I call myself. And, uh, man, man, when I got to the curses, man, I still got the book, man. And it's still in perfect condition. After I had read the curses, man, and realized, man, that we was the Israelites. Oh, man, man I changed my whole everything. And then that developed... The Israelite Brotherhood, you know, I mean, I mean, it took a while to get, you know what I'm saying, to the level that I'm on, but all praise be Almighty Yah, He got me here where I can cover the whole Israelite history. You know what I'm saying? I can cover the whole Israelite history, man, from top to bottom. And like I say, ain't nobody in the Israelite community got no history like I'm showing. You know, I'm constantly searching to see 
what organization is putting out, you know, some correct history, man. And ain't nobody putting out no correct history, you know what I'm saying, like I'm doing and stuff. And, you know, that's because Almighty Yah, man, his messenger I always come from a afflicted background. I always come from an afflicted background and, and hard. And, and, and then, you know, Almighty Yah bring them through so they could be a testimony. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I am. I'm a testimony. You know what I'm saying? For, uh, that Almighty Yah saves. And uh, so, man, that's my history, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, me and I grew up in the gang life. And, uh, man, I was blind. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that that was Israelite on Israelite violence. You know, like I say, man, when I was growing up, man, and when I had uh, problems and stuff, man, I always looked at my enemy as non-human and, and it make it easier for you to uh you know men inflict violence on them and that's how we do each other when we call each other negroes blacks african americans and all them titles look man i even mean when i got out of prison one time man i went and kicked it with the brother funnier capers and, and then funnier capers man is a uh man is down you know what i'm saying this brother uh uh Kicked it with uh, Men Nothing Yahoo. Man, I went all the way up to uh, Men to Chicago to kick it with him. Man, to show you how much, man, I believe in the Israelite struggle. And uh, man, it's a good brother. We on Facebook page. The, the, this is Obama's uh, uh, relative. You know what I'm saying? His wife's first cousin. And, and uh, you know, this brother, man, kicks it with You know what I'm saying? There he go right there kicking it with nah, nah, nothing yet you know what i'm saying so you know man the israelite struggle is real you know what i'm saying and that's me and him you know what i'm saying and uh i'm the founder of the israelite brotherhood and i got the best history in the whole israelite community man i show you how we broke the covenant and ran into africa to be enslaved and how it wasn't no 10 lost tribes i destroy all the jewish myths well, Almighty Yah, man, and his messenger going to come from a hard background. And then when Almighty Yah bring them around to the truth, man, they going to have some whole, man, some hard, cold truth. And then that's what I got. No history like it in the whole Israelite community. And they ain't trying to back or brag, man. I'm amazed, man, that Almighty Yah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, let me reveal the history. And, and then how about, man, before I got to this stage, that all my enemies that could have stood in my way, Almighty Yah destroyed all of them. All of them. All of them destroyed, man. And I'd be scared sometimes thinking about how Almighty Yah done destroyed all my enemies. You know what I'm saying? So it's got to be a purpose. Look, Hebrews, I want y'all to join the Israelite Brotherhood. I'm putting the plaque for them together. And, uh, man, I want you Israelites, man, to, uh, Join me, man, and, and become part of the Israelite Brotherhood when it's time. I'm waiting on the uh, headquarters to come down. So when I get to headquarters, man, I'm going to put out all the information, man, about joining. And then that's when, you know, I'm going to need everybody's support. And then that's when we're going to take off and some things going to get done in the Israelite community. Because we know now that all the Israelite organizations are using Jewish myths. You know, this is the only organization that ain't using no Jewish myths. You know, all praise be to Almighty Yah. You know, man, man, I just explained my background and where I come from, so ain't no better person can tell my history than me. You know what I'm saying? And, and it ain't been sweet. Man, it ain't been sweet at all. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Almighty Yah bless me. Man, and I look at the, uh, man, the things that I've been through, man, and he showed sure nothing and blessed me and saved me, and y'all saves. You know, I'm the founder of the Israelite Brotherhood, and uh, one day I prayed that it be the organization that make difference in the Israelite community, and all you brothers and sisters, men, men that's in them gangs, men and so forth, Mean you can come out the gangs, you can come out the gangs and have something to do to make up for that wasted time that we wasted in them gangs and so forth. You know what I'm saying? And, and man, the people that, that's in the gangs are like the fighters for Almighty Yah. It's just that they fighting for the wrong cause. 
And, and then when they wake up to, to their Israelite heritage and start fighting for it, man, that's when our Israelite heritage start to progress. All right, Hebrews, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. Man, I just show you where I come from. And, 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 and you know, the things that I've been through, man, to get to the stage that I am now. Now, I done made this video, man, a couple of times, but this is the final one. It is what it is. And I get praise to Almighty Yah. And I pray that all you Israelites are doing well. Shalom. Shalom, Hebrews. This is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. Man, I'm just extending this video, showing you Israelites how y'all saved. You know, Almighty Yah saved me. As I explained how I was caught up in that gang culture, you know what I'm saying? And I all messed up and, and, man, everywhere and didn't know which way to go, you know. Man, I had a relative, man, in Chattanooga named Jake Away. Man, Jake Away had lottery. Man, it's on my daddy's side. I don't even know. My, ain't never know my daddy. Ain't never seen him. You know what I'm saying? He got killed, man, before. You know, my mama had me and stuff. But his nephews, you know what I'm saying? Some of his nephews, man, be, become lottery guys, man. He had illegal lottery, man, before the state of Tennessee. And, and a whole lot of uh, southern states had lottery. How he had lottery. Man, for years, man, had lottery for years, man, was a millionaire, and, and, uh, man, you know what I'm saying, me and him, man, when I come to Chattanooga and robbed the jewelry store and then got caught, you know, robbing the jewelry store at the airport with 250000 I was really waiting on him to, uh, buy some of the jewelry and stuff, but he was in Alabama, and, uh, but anyway, me and him got locked up at the same time where the feds come got him and, and his crew and locked him up and uh man you know what i'm saying he been missing a letter man you know what i'm saying that he uh wrote me you know what i'm saying well today i talked to the lawyer and everybody that's involved in the case they all are talking in jail for everybody me and my wife so but i mean it looked pretty bad and you know what I'm saying, on my side, but I know such that the Lord will pray and, you know what I'm saying, such and such, man, look, uh, over you, you know what I'm saying, but, but anyway, man, he got to telling me, man, that, you know what I'm saying, that only your family, man, that, you know what I'm saying, is, is the only ones that you can really depend on and how his people, man, you know what I'm saying, waited on him to fall so they can get his money and stuff, but, but this the thing, man, he was telling me, man, you know what I'm saying, that man, when I got out of jail, man, that I can go live in one of his houses and just hang around, man, until he get out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, man, I left uh, man, I left uh, uh Memphis. Look, I mean, I will always give. You know what I'm saying? Man, I left Chattanooga, man, and moved to Memphis and stuff. Chattanooga too small, but anyway. Almighty, y'all work in mysterious ways because, man, if I would have got with this brother, man, and, you know what I'm saying, continued the uh, criminality, man, you know what I'm saying, it's, man, I don't know if I would have found the Almighty, y'all, and then, man, what really saved me, man, is that, you know what I'm saying, that when I come down to Chattanooga, you know, a lot of them guys, man, they had watch colors, and they was gang members based on colors, but my sisters and them told them, you know, that a real guy was coming from uh, from prison. Man, I had talked to a few of them guys on the phone when I was in Folsom. You know what I'm saying? In Folsom Prison. So they kind of excited me and, uh, you know what I'm saying, the men and the of them. And, and uh, man, I, uh, I could have uh, been washed up, man, with these brothers and sisters even though i hate it for them i hate it for them and i pray that the israelite brotherhood mean to be able to uh, reach out and undo some of the damage you know what i'm saying that was done but anyway man they leader man the leader you know what i'm saying it is you know man meant to these guys man is a guy that i mentored and you know what i'm saying took up under my wings and stuff and then man i gave him the car man you know what i'm saying the whole gang car man when i was in uh 
Brushy Mountain. You know, Brushy Mountain Prison. You know, I have been meant to a fruit of the Tennessee prisons, but I was in Brushy Mountain Prison, and I got the letter, man, from him. Let me see if I can find that letter. Him writing me, man, in Brushy Mountain. See this? Petros. Brushy Mountain. Brushy Mountain State Prison. Brushy Mountain State Prison. Petros. Petros, Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? High security annex. That, that's where I was in the tombs. That's what they call the tombs. When I had, uh, you know, disciplined a guy up in North East, man, for uh, causing, you know, my uh, uh, contraband to be found and stuff. And uh, But this guy, Larry Bush, you know what I'm saying? And he's also the father, man, of my... Uh, Sister, son, you know what I'm saying? That's his son. His son, you know, lost his life, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, many, many lost his life and stuff. And uh, you know, man, if the daddy, you know, the daddy had got locked up in the uh, federal prison, man, if the daddy would have been out, man, it'd have been so much bloodshed, man. In that little city, man, based on that and stuff, and uh, you know. But anyway, man, I had gave him the keys to the car and, and uh, let him, you know what I'm saying, roll with the thing. And uh, this is, uh, man, this is what it morphed into. And, and I could have went this way. But but, 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 but but just let you know that y'all saved. Because at the time when he was trying to, uh, you know what I'm saying, man, man, when I gave him the keys to the car, man, that's 19... Uh, 92, you know what I'm saying? That was just loud to look. 12. 12, 7, 92. You know what I'm saying? 12, 7, 92. How about, man, if you start searching for Almighty Yah, he'll find you. You know what I'm saying? If you search it for him, he gonna find you. And then, how about, man, during that time, man, I start writing. Man, man I was in the high security Annex, you know what I'm saying? The man I was in the high security annex, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, I was, uh, man, writing this rabbi trying to get some history, you know what I'm saying? Man, trying to get some history. Look, look, you see that? 12, you know what I'm saying? I had said that, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to uh, uh, search out my heritage, man, and start, you know, but I had already been exposed to Israelite history, but then I start, you know, Man, uh, uh, praying and wanting to know, man, some real truth. And Almighty, y'all turned my heart, man, away from the gang activity. And, and uh, man, y'all saves. You know, if you start searching for y'all, man, he gonna find you. You know what I'm saying? Man, he gonna find you. He he gonna be found if you start searching for him. And, uh, man, but man, I wasn't looking, man, for no Jesus. I was looking for Almighty, y'all. The, man, man, the creator uh, 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 in, in the yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I, you know what I'm saying. I was calling out to him, and, and, and then he found me. You know what I'm saying. And, and then this is what he saved me from. Indictments of gang members in Chattanooga. These photos show 40 of the people who were arrested. And here is now a closer look at those booking That's photos. That's four of them. These people lived all over the city. The DA's offices. Men, men on his other roundup. Men, men on his other roundup. Men they got. 50 of them. But man, I think 50, 54 of them. Let me see. Alright, but, alright, look, this the leader right here, man, the one that I wrote, you know what I'm saying, that wrote me asking, can he take care of the car and how he gonna look after everything. around that area, they say they're happy to hear that those gang members are now off their streets. According to the district attorney's office, William yes, Bush is the father of the Athens Park Bloods in Chattanooga. In the past, police called him a career criminal. They say he influenced his children to participate in gang activity yeah, my little while nephew. living in the south side of town. How long ago without my husband after dark? Lena Fugat grew up in Chattanooga. Look, that's my nephew, the one. But, man, that's what Almighty y'all saved me from, man. I, you know what I'm saying? They think he was... Worse, so they already know, you know what I'm saying, who was worse than him, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, man, I had the whole 
CD to myself. I was doing stuff to them guys, man, that they couldn't figure out. They couldn't figure out what was going on. Man, when I was down in Chattanooga, and, you know, I ain't going to talk about, you know, all that stuff. Almighty, y'all changed me, and I plan on doing some work in Chattanooga. But, but you see how y'all saved. Man, I got the letter, man, from him right there. It, right there. It, it, this is his letter. This is that guy right there. This is him. This is his letter right here. You know what I'm saying? The letter is kind of, you know what I'm saying, is light, you know. But, uh, man, you know what I'm saying? He, uh, talking about, you know, him some keeping the car running. You know what I'm saying? Gonna keep the car running and, man, make sure everything, man, go the way it's supposed to. And, uh, sure. Uh, almighty y'all saved because I could have kept that same mentality and I'm the father of them. But look and see how almighty y'all kept me out the picture and stuff. And uh, this guy, he could have easily, you know, uh, uh, make life difficult. You know what I'm saying? But almighty y'all saved. You know what I'm saying? I'm the founder and leader of the Israelite Brotherhood. And, and, and man, do, do they ever want that? in the court system and, and on record because that's what I stand for. You know what I'm saying? But you see how y'all saves. You know what I'm saying? Almighty y'all saves. All right, Israelite, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. You know, this is my my roots. You know what I'm saying? And this is where I come from. And, and you know, you Israelites see the history that I put out. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't nobody... In the Israelite community, got no history, nowhere near what I show and how I got the real facts. Well, well that's how Almighty Yah work when He take His people from from the slumps and from the men, men, men from the dumps and from being out and, and, and messed up, and, and then He bring them into the truth and give them truth and save them. And then you see how Almighty Yah save me. You see, you see how Almighty Yah save me. Man, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood.